We're now turning to the Netherlands. Now, the Netherlands were the most prosperous province of Burgundy, and it's under the political control of Spain. That's kind of an issue because, of course, Spain is going to be Catholic. The Netherlands tend to be Protestant. It will raise a lot of issues as we continue on. But one of the best known artists of the period is going to be Hieronymus Bosch. Now, he's one of the most famous of the Netherlands painters around the turn of the century. He's also incredibly enigmatic. His paintings are difficult to interpret. A lot of his ideas are very complex or possibly completely insane. You make the call. But we are going to look at his Garden of Earthly Delights, which is this massive altarpiece that will never actually be an altarpiece. But it is laid out in that form. Now, this is his most enigmatic work and defies interpretation. The exterior shows a flat earth in this massive glass sphere. And the work takes on the form of an altarpiece, but has never hung in a church. There's a lot of interpretations to this, so let's start drawing through it or going through it. It may be a marriage piece. The idea being that the couple becomes married, just like Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, and then they wander from the marriage bed in the middle panel, and then they go to hell in the far panel. It may be a warning against the dangers of hedonism, which we see a lot of in the middle panel. In fact, there's lots of cavorting going on in various forms. Uh, here we have cavorting in glass spheres, cavorting with fruit and birds, giant glass spheres while cavorting on someone's head, standing on their head, cavorting under trees. It all works, but basically the idea is please don't cavort too much. And I've said cavort way too often in this segment, and that's perfectly fine. So, what else could it be? Well, it could also be looking at alchemy. We have a lot of symbols throughout that are similar to the alchemical symbols that would be used by the likes of Newton and other alchemists. They're using symbols and codes to hide what they're doing. These are also very similar to many of the vessels that be, would be used in alchemy. And by the way, alchemy will develop into chemistry as we know it today. It's just not quite as much fun because you're not looking for the Philosopher's Stone or the Sorcerer's Stone or Harry Potter. So. As we move over, you see images of hell. And this is a depiction of hell. We know this is apparent depiction of hell, although it seems rather unusual and futuristic. We have depictions of what appears to be the London Blitz, or at least that's one of the theories with searchlights and fire and smoke. We have this bird figure who consumes and then excretes figures into what appears to be a cesspool. We have a shrew or pig dressed as a nun attacking someone. We see figures dancing on the hat of another figure who's missing his lower half. It's a very unusual, very surreal scene, and it's surreal in a strange way, especially when you consider surrealism is now 500 years in the future. Hieronymus Bosch wouldn't have been familiar with it. So this could be a depiction of the Last Judgment. This could be the creation of man on the left, the fall of man in the center, and then the result of the fall of man on the right. There's a lot of possibility here. It could be warning against wandering from the marriage bed. It could be alchemy. It could be drug-induced. I'm not entirely sure, but that's always a possibility that we have to deal with. Either way, it's a very interesting and enigmatic image, and if you're looking for something for a final project, this would be perhaps one of the best paintings to do a final project on. After all, you're definitely not going to get bored looking at it. 